What's up guys, my name is James. I am the co-author of Airbnb for Dummies. I'm the host of uh, one of the creators behind Learn BNB. And I want to take this opportunity to just kind of go through something that I've seen that's really, really interesting. It's a great opportunity for a bunch of people that I'm seeing specifically in Toronto, but really I'm seeing this all over the world right now, is that rent prices are dropping through the floor. As a lot of you guys know, Airbnb hosts, a lot of them are going over to long-term rental right now. And I know myself and I'm sure a lot of other people have heard stories about Airbnb hosts dropping their rates drastically to get it filled up. I've even got a friend of mine who got a two bedroom property in the downtown core of Toronto. Now this property is fully furnished. It would typically go for about $3,600, $3,700 a month. And he managed to snag it for $1,700 for the month. So again, there's some really, really great opportunities here and specifically for people that are looking for places to stay, especially you know during the quarantine, things like that, that's a really great opportunity. If you've got cash set aside and you're still bullish on rental arbitrage, I've seen that some people are picking up properties now. Now, I personally, like a lot of you guys know, I do not recommend rental arbitrage. I've always been pretty against it. I think it's very high risk, very low reward when you really boil down the numbers to it. I think that people in rental arbitrage right now are having a really, really tough time. I talked about in another video, about how Airbnb hosting is actually illegal right now in a lot of cities uh, around the world in light of everything going on in the world right now. And so I think that it can be very dangerous to do rental arbitrage. That being said, uh, you know, some people do still do it and now can be a really great time to pick up units if you're, if you're you know, okay with taking on that risk of having it sit vacant. Uh, but I really wanna walk you guys through this because if anyone's thinking about moving and they're in a position financially where they're, you know, they haven't lost their job, they've got the opportunity, now can be a really, really great time and you can pick up some units for some just insanely, insanely low prices. So I'm gonna look at some, we're gonna jump onto the computer here. I'm gonna look at some properties that I'm gonna show you are coming off of Airbnb and are onto the long-term rental inventory right now that are at some drastically reduced rates. I'm gonna focus specifically on Toronto because that's the market that I'm most familiar with. Um, and for any hosts out there who are thinking about transitioning over to long-term rental, I've got some tips for you guys so that you can get the highest dollar for your listing because you'll see that a lot of these are going for dirt, dirt cheap. Um, and so I'm gonna talk to you about some strategies that I've come across to get the most dollar out of your listing if you are going over to long-term rental or if you decide that you're gonna stay on Airbnb. So let's jump onto the computer now. I've got some really interesting listings to show you. All right, so I wanna start out here. I wanna show you guys, so the average cost of a one bedroom Toronto rental is, and this was posted seven months ago here, was $2,300. Now, keep in mind, that's for an unfurnished rental there. So for an unfurnished property, the average property in Toronto is going for $2,300 for a one bedroom. Um, like Toronto is the most expensive place in Canada for real estate for rental. Um, there's for a number of years now, there's been a shortage of supply, um, access to demand, lots of people coming into the city. And so we've seen that there's been a, a really, really high and always increasing uh, cost of living here. And now if we go over to Kijiji, it's kind of like the Craigslist of Canada for anyone who's not familiar with it. Uh, we have Craigslist here too, of course, but this is another one that's, I'd say a bit more popular. It's just known for being uh, a little more popular for, uh, for searching for rentals, things like that, buy and sell. And so um, you can see, I've already been looking at a couple here. I'll even pull them up now. But like, uh, if we look at, I'm looking at downtown core. So 12 York Street is kind of like downtown, right in the entertainment district in the heart of it. And if we just look for, uh, for real estate here, and I'm gonna go for rent, long-term rentals, um, people are just like really dropping the rates and what we'll do is i'm going to look at specifically furnished properties because these are typically going to be like most of these properties are going to be properties that if we go yes um are going to be properties that are um that are coming off of airbnb right now just in light of everything that's going on and you can see that we're within three kilometers of the entertainment district there so we're really right in the core here this is like the core you know expensive most expensive part of toronto for sure and you can see here, we've got um, a furnished three bedroom, two bathroom for $2,800. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good price for a three bed, two bath. Um, now here's the one that I just opened up here, a one bedroom property in Liberty Village. So this is in the West End of downtown. So really, really great neighborhood, uh, very popular neighborhood, especially for young people. It's kind of up and coming. And the bear in mind, like the average rent price in Toronto, if we look back over it for a one bedroom unfurnished, is twenty three hundred dollars. Now, I would I would say like I'm I'm pretty familiar with the area, especially the West End. Um, 
I would say that this this property unfurnished in in a good market like a couple months ago before everything kind of got crazy will be going for somewhere in the range of twenty three to twenty five hundred dollars a month, and that's unfurnished. Okay, and now you've got this property that's beautifully furnished. It's all set up. I would imagine that this is an Airbnb. I would I would hazard a guess to say that this was an Airbnb that's now been transitioned over. Um, and I'd imagine so this is going to be like fully, fully furnished, I'd imagine like it's going to come with um, all the decorations going to come with like fully stocked kitchen, everything. It's got a carport. Um, so now you've got like a, you've got a washer dryer in unit. You've got a carport like this is a really nice unit in Toronto. I know for some of you that like live outside the city might be going, holy smokes, this is a, you're getting very, very little for your money here. But that's just the reality of Toronto. And now you're getting this property. Let's look at the location here. So this is beautiful location, like right by the gardener, right in, in, in the, the heart of Liberty Village here. Great spot, $2,000, fully, fully furnished, right? Like that's a really great deal. And we're seeing that like that, that's honestly, that's, that's not bad for the property owner, but for, uh, for like, for the tenant, that's an insane price. If you can lock that in for 12 months, imagine that like you're going to save like 3000 to 5000 $6,000 a year from that, from that property, just for getting it, picking it up. And that's like compared to if you were to get it unfurnished, if you're getting this place furnished, it'd probably be going for the upper end, like 25, 26, $2,700 a month. Um, so you're saving a lot of money by getting in on this right now. Um, you've got a uh, beautiful upscale one bedroom. Like you can see, this is literally only a couple blocks away. These people are way overpriced. They don't know what the heck the market is doing right now, I would imagine. Cause look, this place here, if we look at this, this is gonna be, the other place we're looking at was right here. This is gonna be not too far away. And they've got a one bedroom that they're trying to get $3,100 for. Now let me see if it's got, is it an actual loft? No, so this isn't even a two story, like a proper loft. This is just a normal one bedroom apartment. And they think they're getting $3,100 for it. Um, like that, I I would be really, really amazed if that's gonna happen in this, in this economy and everything that we're seeing right now, that's gonna be challenging. But that gives you an idea of what a property like this is going for. Like that is, that's pretty normal, I would say a couple of months ago for a property going for that kind of money. Um, let's look, we got another one here, fully furnished, uh, you know, utilities included right on Bay Street. So that's like right downtown in the financial district. That one's going for 2,200. Again, bear in mind the average price for a one bedroom. I'm not talking about, you know, like a downtown Bay Street financial district premium location. I'm talking the average price for a one bedroom in the entire city of Toronto was 2,300 unfurnished. And I got one going for 2,200 fully furnished there. What do we got here? A furnished one bedroom suite with walk-in closet, storage and parking for 2,250. Like, again, these are some wild prices. You've got another one here for 1,269. Let's look at this. Um, I can't imagine a property going for, for that little, this is a place that's, it looks like it's, uh, it is actually long-term furnished. There's no furniture in here. Oh yeah, there is. Okay. And they've got this place listed for, it's a two bedroom for 1269. I can't even believe that. That is wild. Yeah, that's insane. Now this place, like this is a good example of someone who's, I would say that they're underpriced. Like that is insane to have a two bedroom downtown Toronto for 1300, under $1,300. That is wildly cheap. That is insane. Now, if you're an Airbnb host, and I want to, I want to talk to you for a second here. Like um, for any of you hosts that are, if you're an Airbnb host right now and you're moving over to long-term rental, you're thinking about doing that. And I think honestly, for a lot of hosts right now, that does make a decent amount of sense. Um, especially there's like, Obviously there's some hosts that are in places like Ontario where it's literally illegal to host on short-term rental. Um, so right now in, in the province of Ontario, it is illegal to host in short-term rental. If you're an individual operator of a short-term rental, you're gonna get fined up to $100,000 if you violate that order. If you're a corporate, um, if you're a corporate uh, host, then you're basically just going to be fined up to $10 million. So they just basically said, we're gonna sewer you financially. There's up to $10 million in fines that we can impose on you if you violate this order. So obviously given all of that, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to host on short-term rental. 
Um, but, and then for a lot of other people, if you just need the money right now, like even if it is still legal in your area to have short-term rentals going, um, if you need the money right now and you're reliant on it for your to keep up with your lifestyle, to meet your expenses, then long-term rental can be a much safer bet. Um, that being said, for some people, like we've talked about in other videos, staying on short-term rental can be a good way to go. We share in other videos that I'll link to in the description below or you can check out on the rest of the channel here. Um, uh, is the, you, we share about just ways that you can still get short-term rent, uh, rentals in. And by short-term, now what I'm talking about is like 14-day stays, 30-day stays, that kind of thing, go month to month, as opposed to putting your place on proper like 12-month lease kind of thing, uh, because that will give you a lot more flexibility. I know that that's a priority for a lot of hosts. So we talk about that in other videos, but specifically for any hosts that are looking to go on to long-term rental, there's a couple of things that you can do right now that are gonna really drastically improve your chances of, um, of actually getting your place booked out, getting it rented for a reasonable rate. Like you can see some of these properties that the one I just showed you that's going for under $1,300 for a two bedroom. I think that that is drastically underpriced even given everything that's going on right now. So I wanna show you how you can do that, how you can rent your place out and not get bad tenants in there and not have and not have it be you know still something where you're just undercutting yourself so much that you're losing money every single month for the next 12 months. Um, now before we touch on that, one thing I'd love to ask is if you if you are getting some some value out of this video, if you like it, please do take some uh, some time to just you know hit the like button, um, give it give the video a thumbs up. I really really appreciate that. It does help me out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm, especially as the channel is getting started here. So if you could just take a quick second, um, hit that like button. I would really really appreciate that. Uh, now, getting back over to this, one of the things that I highly recommend you do if you haven't done it already is if you are going on to long-term rental, take out your smartphone and go and take a video. You'll see, I'll show you when we jump back in here, there's a couple of different properties that I've found where the, uh, the owner of the property, the person renting it out, has gone and done a video walkthrough of the property. Now, that's gonna make it a lot, a lot, a lot easier to get someone to rent your place because most people are not gonna be looking to actually go buy the property and meet with someone in person. Um, most people are not gonna be comfortable with that given everything that's going on. So doing a video walkthrough is a really, really great way to, uh, to just make it easier for people to book your space. So that's one thing I really highly recommend. The other thing I highly recommend is that you leave your phone number, leave your email, whatever it is, like leave your contact detail um, as accessible as possible. Because I think what a lot of people do, what people are used to, especially in Toronto and cities like Toronto, where um, historically what we've seen is that there's a huge surplus of demand for housing and then a shortage of supply. So you've got like a whole bunch of people looking for housing and then you've got uh, very few with it is landlords, property owners are in the place of, of this very, very nice cushy place of if they put their place up, they're going to get 20 people, 30 people applying to rent it. And so what do they do? They make it relatively difficult to get in touch with them because they want to screen people. They want to put those barriers in place. And now, one, now that the situation is reversed, you've got very few people, I would imagine, looking for long-term rentals. And we've definitely got a flood of supply coming into the market. You don't want to be screening people out. You don't want to be like not wasting your time with certain people. You want to get people's contact information and you want to be proactive in following up with them. So stay on top of it, like follow up with them, get their contact information as soon as possible because you want to realize that right now it's very likely that you're going to be competing for renters, not the other way around. What you're used to is that renters are competing for your property in a lot of markets and now we're going to see a flip there. We're likely going to see that properties are fighting for renters. Um, and so you just want to be proactive in, in dealing with that. You want to get their contact information, start following up with them a little bit more aggressively, like be consistent with that sort of thing. Um, those are two things that I recommend so you can get top dollar for your listing. The other thing, the third thing that I recommend is to have your place listed on Airbnb still, but just list it for long-term stays. And then you can communicate with people, get them lined up to have a long-term stay, 30 days or more, um, even you can get them into month to month because people that are on Airbnb are typically willing to pay more for a property, even if it is multi, like a long-term rental, than if, they're, uh, than if they're on Kijiji, if they're on Craigslist, that sort of thing. So it's on Kijiji or Craigslist is typically looking for unfurnished. And so the furniture is gonna be kind of a bonus to them. They might not be really willing to pay more for that. 
Um, whereas someone that's looking on Airbnb is looking for specifically a uh, furnished long-term rental or a furnished short-term rental. And so if you pick up someone like that, that's willing to pay that premium for the furniture, then that could be a really big plus for you as well. Um, now, that being said, you do want to diversify. You want to go everywhere. You want to go on Craigslist. You want to go on Kijiji or whatever that is for you, like over in the UK, Gumtree, things like that. Um, but definitely stay on Airbnb as well. Now, if we jump back in here, let's look at a couple more here. Like if we look at this one, uh, this fully furnished one bedroom luxury unit going for 2,300. So this is going, um, now this is fully furnished and it's a high end unit in a really good place, like um, right downtown, right by the, by Young and Dundas Square, like the, the center of Toronto. Um, and that's going for what the average uh, one bedroom was said to be going for just seven months ago. Wow, this one's over two stories. So yeah, this is a really nice, really big place here. Um, it's got a beautiful kitchen. Okay, this has a basement in it too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this property has a basement. It's got a backyard. Um, it's got, it's over three different stories and that's going for $2,300. So that's pretty wild when you think about it. Now, um, yeah, this is a yeah, prime location. You can see they put their phone number right here. Moving date is negotiable. Yeah, you wanna be negotiable as a landlord right now. Like you wanna be flexible. You wanna do what you can to facilitate just having it work for the, for the renter. Because uh, again, it's a renter's market right now. I don't know whether that's gonna last for long, but for right now, it certainly is the case. Um, now let's see if we can find one that has a, uh, a video walkthrough because I know I saw that. I came across that a little while ago with another property. You can see here, Queen in Portland, beautiful location, fully furnished, $2,300. Um, yeah, you can see like rental prices are definitely in the pits right now. Uh, but let's see if we can find one here, even if it is, a, uh, is an overpriced one. Uh, but if we can find with a video and I can show you what I mean, but basically you just wanna do, you just wanna grab the camera, do a quick video walkthrough going through the space and just showing potential tenants um, like what it actually looks like to walk into the place, to walk around it, all the, the whole layout, everything like that. If you've got a floor plan, put that one up too. Like give the renter as much as you can possibly give them so that they can see everything they need and be able to, to make a decision um, you know, without, uh, without having to actually go see the place. So yeah, you can see here, this person's put a video up. Um, yeah, let me just mute this out so you don't get all that sound. Yeah, so this is gonna be great. Like this person you can see is gonna walk through the entire listing. They're gonna show you all the layout. You can see the views, you can see everything, right? So now you virtually don't even have to go to actually see this property in order to rent it. Like you don't need to go and visit. There's no real need to. It's rental ready, like move in ready. He's, the person's showing you through everything. You can see the layout, great. You can see everything, all the amenities it's got, all that. Um, so. Now it just makes it so much more seamless to, to go and rent the place, to get it, get it signed, get it done. And that's going to be the difference, right? Is like if someone else is, if I'm looking at this place and I'm looking at another place and then this one, I'm, I'm ready to act on it. I want to pick this up, this place up quickly. And the other one, I have to go by there and see it and walk through it. And like, I don't really want to do that given everything that's going on. This might be the, like, that might be the deciding factor that might make the difference here. So again, like highly recommend doing that video walkthrough, take the time to do that, set that up. And again, like this is another one. It's a beautiful one right in the downtown core, one bedroom, fully furnished, $2,300. That includes high speed internet, everything. Like this is a really good buy. And this person was smart with the way that they set it up and did it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. It really, really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you just take a second and just like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. If you want more content like this, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, just let me know in the comments below. Like, let me know if you like this type of video where I jump on the computer and kind of show you around some stuff. Uh, you know, and I don't normally do things like this in these, uh, these types of videos. So if you like this and you want more of this, then just let me know in the comments below. Any thoughts, any questions, anything you want to share, just let me know in the comment section there. Again, I would really, really love it if you would take a second to just give this video a quick like, a quick thumbs up. Uh, really helps you out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Otherwise, uh, happy hosting. Hopefully everyone's, everyone's staying safe out there and we will uh, see you in the next video.